My name is Edith Furman Goodman. Furman is my maiden name. And I was 10 years old when uh, the war broke out with Germany. We were, before that, we were uh, occupied by the Soviet Union for a year, in 1940 uh, till 41. And the night before the Hungarians left, the two captains and some more and their people and their entourage were drinking a whole night. And my mother, I remember, was standing by the window because rumors were already around that Jews were being harmed. And she was standing by the window and watching what was happening. Well, towards morning, my mother, who understood a little bit of Hungarian, heard them say Zsidó. Zsidó means Jews. And she thought, things don't look too well. So she got us out of bed, and we ran away from home. We ran in, in the garden. And um, some soldiers came after us and brought us back. And they wanted to take us there to, to where, to that factory where they had their headquarters. And my sister begged one of the soldiers to let us go home. And she took off, she had a little ring with her monogram, and she gave him the ring, and he let us go home. And then, Nobody was harmed, even though some neighbors were taken in there. Nobody was harmed there. And in the afternoon, the soldier came back and uh, gave her back the ring. And he wanted a picture of my sister so that he should be able to, to tell who he saved. And uh, so we thought, okay, now we are safe. But a few weeks later, when the Romanian government came and got settled in, and uh, the same uh, people, the, the gendarme came, the, they were before the war there, the same people, and they uh, uh, came one day and told my parents that we have to leave there. So my mother said, well, you know me, I was, I grew up here, you saw me growing up, this is my home. He says, I'm sorry, these are my orders. And he took us to the border, and there, by the time we got there, it was towards the evening, on a Sunday evening, and... Uh, they kept us there a whole night without food, without drink, without water. And uh, they searched and searched, and they thought we have money and jewelry. They searched a whole night. As I said, I was a little girl, and I was scared to death. And I remember telling my father, Daddy, give them everything I want to live. You know, so afterwards I was being teased how I cried and that I said I want to live. The evening before we crossed the river, they gathered 40 men, uh, just the men, and uh, the Romanian, the, the ones that guarded us, the ones that took care, looked after us. Uh, my mother started to run to see where my father is being taken. So a soldier turned around and turned to the uh, a woman that also came to look where her husband is. So my mother thought, I better go back, I better not go. And there too, the soldiers were beating and searching all these men. and. My father came to my father. My father was begging that officer there, please let us go back to the family. Look, I have three children and an old mother, and 
please let us go back. So that uh, Romanian officer looked at his hands and he said, oh, I have enough Jewish blood on my hand, go back. We found a very nice woman, a Ukrainian woman. She used to bring us milk and potatoes just from the goodness of her heart. And he, she, uh, that we had food to eat. So we were lucky we met people that helped us. You have uh, been through and, uh, you know, knowing such a terrible thing as the Holocaust. I mean, uh, it yeah. doesn't have, has an effect to your faith. Uh, how can you... No, uh, the faith kept us alive mm -hmm. and we were hoping that we will be saved, which we were, you know. It is, we were always hoping and praying that we will be saved. I mean, what else is there if not faith, you know? So we, we kept the faith even even in, in when we were the three years in Transnistria and that ghetto, even the, there, we tried to keep whatever was possible. Mm -hmm. And because that kept us alive. Uh, then, then when we came here and I saw the bombarding in Vietnam, and I saw children running on the, little children running on the street. So it brought back memories. I thought to myself, I thought that after that war, there won't ever be another war. After the Second World War was over. And when I saw these kids running on the street, running away from the bombs and from the shooting, it brought back memories, you know, with, when, how I was on the street. And, on the bus. and one day we were liberated by the Soviet army. It was on a Friday, the Soviet army came and, and we felt we survived the war. So Saturday, everybody gathered outside on the, on the streets and and the, the army, the Soviet army, they were with the, with the accordions and playing and people were dancing and, and uh, having a good time that, you know, the war is over for us. Because we, how old were you then? Uh, when the, oh, the, 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 that was in 43. I was 12 or 13 mm -hmm. or something. Right. And I... Uh, so I, we all went out on the street to celebrate. Only my grandmother stayed in the house. And while we were there and I was looking at the people having a good time, I heard the airplanes. And the sound, it sounded so much like in 39, when they were bombarding at the village where I lived, where I was born that I thought, oh, oh, the German planes are coming. I better go home. Mm. And I did go home, and they did uh, the, the, the planes that come back and were bombarding that little town. And they, um, uh, about 62 horses were killed because the Soviet army came. And these horses and a lot of people were killed. And my parents were out there having a good time too. They were looking at people dancing. You know, it was like a new life. And they started to run home too, and my sister too, except we couldn't find my brother for a while. And uh, my parents came towards the house where we lived. My mother said, it's better to be inside and my father said, no, it's better to be outside. So my mother came in the house, and the father, <laughs> my father was out there. But thank God we survived it. And then we, we went down in the valley where, where it was away from the center of that little town. 
and we were hiding there in case the bombs or the planes are going to come back. And then the Soviet army, they, uh, they gathered up all the soldiers. Some of them were killed, and the, their leader, their captain or what, I never forgot this. He gathered up all the soldiers, and we were hiding there in that valley. And he told them in Russian, Vidity eti ludi, you see these people, do we have to save them? And they said, yes, we have to save them and we have to uh, fight for them. Then he said, then come on, let's go. And they took off and they went and the planes never came back, but uh, they were on the run already, the Nazis. But but the, I was very impressed with the Soviet army then, the way he he was so conscientious and so devoted to he says to see the people. He said, "You see them. We have to nada yich spasat. Do we have we have to save them? I, you know, we were walking. They were from one place to the next that first summer." And uh, there was one soldier that was, there was a whole group of people that were, I don't know, maybe 500 or so, but we were dragging ourselves on the road. And my father was watching out for us and my mother. And so we were walking and there was a soldier, a Romanian soldier was walking with us. And my sister was a very pretty girl. And he wanted to take my sister. He says, I'm going to take her and I'm going to, um, I will convert her. I'll, her name was Martha, is Martha. He said, I'll give her a name of Maria. And she, um, uh, she will uh, survive. I will take her to our church and we'll, and I want to take her with me to Chernovitz, to the big city. Naturally, my parents wouldn't let him. He, he would probably kill her then. So, and he was walking with us, and every time he would shoot in the air, he walked with us for quite a while and kept on promising how... So my father said, no, both girls, he said, I'm not going to separate them, and gave them all kinds of excuses. And uh, he said, well, then I'll take both of them. He'll take me too. And then, then they saw they cannot get rid of him. So somehow my grandmother had in, her, in the hem of her dress she had some jewelry. She had her other daughters a watch and some rings. And somehow she took it out and gave him that little package of jewelry. So then he left us alone. Then he walked away and we didn't see him anymore. And, uh, but this way he was, and, and nobody, there were other soldiers around, other Nobody said, why are you shooting? Or If he would have killed us right there, nobody would have said boo. You know, that's how our life was so cheap. And uh, he, he just wouldn't leave us alone. And then he, uh, after my grandmother gave him the jewelry, then he, the jewelry replaced us. <laughs> So you can come up here. Yeah. And um, look at the painting. Oh, yeah. You can go that I, way. I there. better, so I better like, it. like it. If not, I'll have, have you redo it. Yes. <laughs> well, that can happen. Pretty close to to what I <laughs> see. Even one eye is smaller. Did you notice that? <laughs> one of my eyes. It's good. It's pretty true to life. <laughs> I didn't know what to wear. If I should wear something flashy or is there something more subdued, so it's okay. <laughs> My hair looks good. <laughs>
Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Eddie. So then, whatever I told you is gonna accompany it. That's or? that's to you. Yes, that's the purpose. Yes, it will be accompanied.